Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place as you listen to The Bright Side every day. You are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. If you have a question about formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about or read about, comments, success stories, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about skin health or our Truth Skin Health products or the Longevity products or business, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, or even better, if you want to start a business, make some money as the new year begins. If you will have a new year's resolution to change your life financially, you want to know about the longevity business, call the phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to my blogs, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can make some money and get your products at the wholesale price and help change the world with nutritional supplementation. That's what we're about at Longevity, and we can help you. We can help you help others. We can help you make some money. We can help you help change the world if that's what you like to do. If you want to help improve lives and make some money at the same time, head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. Sign up right off the website or call the phone team at 866-735-2470. 2470 Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. Once again, we're talking connective tissue. We'll probably talk about this stuff for a while. I'm telling you, there's nothing more important to understand when it comes to how the body is put together, when it comes to the health of the body, when it comes to the beauty of the body and the look of the body, than the connective tissue. For the last few months, we've been talking about how it's related to the heart and how it's related to the circulatory system. On our last few programs, we've been talking about how, uh, how the connective tissue is related to our beauty and physical appearance. And the obvious, the most obvious and dramatic aspect of beauty and physical appearance, of course, is going to be the skin. The beauty business and the skin business, which I have been honored to be a part of as a pharmacist and as a chemist and as an educator, as a formulator, as a therapist, as a clinician, as a researcher, and as a businessman as well. I, first, I started my first skincare business in 1990 when I was 30 years old. I've been doing this stuff for many years. And unfortunately, I got to tell you, the skincare business is filled with charlatans. It's filled with dimwits. It's filled with people preying on the innocent, mostly women, who just want to look good. It's just a not nice business. It's not a fair business. And I've dedicated my life to exposing it. And every day, I get emails from dermatologists and doctors. I'm making little air quotes here. Dermatologists and doctors who are selling skincare products that are just the same old crap that people have been selling for 100 years, literally. The skincare products we use today are 100 to 150 years old. They're based in, in, in technology that it's 100 to 150 years old when we knew nothing about the skin. We knew nothing about its relationship to connective tissue. We didn't know what a fibroblast was. We didn't know what a keratinocyte was. We had no idea about how the skin was put together, how to have beautiful skin. And we're using the same darn products. And nobody's changed. And I don't care whether they're a dermatologist or a plastic surgeon or a movie star. 
They're selling the same crapola that people have been using for 100 to 150 years. And the fact of the matter is, with the exception of vitamin C, vitamin A, and hydroxy acids, alpha hydroxy acids primarily, also something called beta hydroxy acids. We'll be talking about this for a while. So if you don't know what I mean, we'll be talking about this. With the exception of those three ingredients, vitamin C, vitamin A, and hydroxy acids, there's nothing that's going to make a significant difference on the look of your skin that you can apply topically. I know there's a zillion products out there. And I know there's a zillion movie stars talking about their products out there. But the vast majority of our skin health issues are not topical, even though they show up topical. They're in the connective tissue, which is located in the deeper layers of the skin, the, part, the area of the skin we call the dermis. Most of the signs of skin aging, most of the signs of skin aging are about the connective tissue. Wrinkles, connective tissue. Fine lines, connective tissue. Crow's feet, connective tissue. Crepey skin, connective tissue. Keloids and scars are also about the connective tissue. Sun damage is also about the connective tissue. And by the way, bruising is about connective tissue. If you've got chronic bruising, folks, you have a connective tissue problem, not a skin problem. If you have chronic purpling just showing up randomly, you got a serious connective tissue problem. If you have various red marks and splotches, these are called petechiae, P-E-T-E-C-H-I-A-E, -E, petechiae. These are also connective tissue problems. They're not skin problems. Pretty much any condition where you see some kind of blood, you've got a, a, a circulatory problem, which is the connective tissue. Technically, they call this vascular bleeding. Vascular bleeding is when the blood leaks out of, out of the vessels, the, the vascular system, the circulatory system is, that's supposed to contain it. When this leaking blood invades the skin issues, you'll see bruises. You'll see spots ranging from tiny little reddish brown spots to purple spots. These are the petechiae. You could even see larger spots. They call that purpura, like purple. These are connective tissue problems. Another vast misunderstanding of the skin, huge misunderstanding of the skin. A, a, a huge, a, probably the biggest misunderstanding of skin health issues is when it comes to something called sensitive skin. Guess what, folks? Sensitive skin is a connective tissue problem. If you've been told you have sensitive skin, and I can't, I don't know how many folks, uh, every day I hear people tell me, oh, my skin is sensitive. I can't put anything on my skin. Everything I put on my skin makes me break out in a rash. Everything I put on my skin makes my, makes my, uh, makes my skin red. Guess what? Connective tissue problem. If you rub your product on your skin and it turns red and irritated, you got a connective tissue problem. We're going to be saying, uh, talking more about this later because it's such a huge subject. Nobody, nobody, nobody should ever have sensitive skin. If you have sensitive skin, if you've been told you have sensitive skin, you got a connective tissue problem. And by the way, that could be a serious issue. It could be an autoimmune issue. It could be something like uh, scleroderma. It could be some, subclinical scleroderma, where you don't know you have it. Subclinical lupus, where you don't know you have it. You just know you have sensitive skin. And then you'll go you know, to the salon or to the uh, Sephora or some department store, and they'll sell you a product for sensitive skin. Horse hockey. You can't put a product on your skin for sensitive skin. It's a connective tissue problem. All of this is to say that understanding what the connective tissue is, understanding the structure of the skin, getting past the visual appearance of the skin. You know, we look at it, it just looks like one thing. It just looks like stuff. I, I don't, re as a researcher and a chemist who's been studying the skin, I've got my own way of looking at it. I wonder sometimes what the average person, the lay person who hasn't studied these things, what do we think of when we look at the skin? It's kind of mysterious, really. I'm looking at my arm now. It's sort of mysterious. If you don't have a researcher's eye or a researcher's understanding, and by researcher I'm talking about anatomical research or physiologic research or even histological research, which is the study of cells and tissue, if you don't have that kind of eye, it's sort of a weird thing. It's understandable that we would think, oh, I got a problem, I got a little rash here, I'm just gonna rub something on and my rash will go away. Oh, I got a wrinkle here, I'm gonna rub something on and my wrinkle will go away. But that's not how it works. And if any dermatologist, plastic surgeon, skincare professional tells you that, that's just not fair. And if any movie star tells you that, well, that's just dirty, dirty pool. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. I'm gonna tell you what you can really do topically to jack up the, the production, the secretion, and improve the health of the connective tissue when we come back from our break. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. All right, 
we are back on the bright side. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Got lots of good health information going on, uh, gosh, six years, I think going on seven years now of health information at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. This has been my personal mission for the last 25 years has been to spread the word about how important good nutrition is, how important health strategies are, how we're misled by the medical model. I've got tons of information. Uh, also, uh, speaking of tons of information, Melissa Galladay has tons of information every Tuesday, 10 a.m. and 10, uh, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. on her, uh, on her, uh, I guess you call them phone conversations. I don't know what these things are called, but every, uh, Every uh, Tuesday, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., Melissa shares longevity pro- uh, shares information about longevity products and how you can change your health using using good nutrition on phone calls. You can dial 408-638-0968, 408-638-0968, meeting ID 579-044-9276. That's 579-044. 9276. Melissa is a nutritional pharmacist like I am, and I can vouch for her expertise. She does her phone calls every Tuesday, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. If you're selling longevity products, this is a great, great way to learn about the products, and it's also a great way to introduce your clients to the power of longevity products and, and the power of longevity information. Because it's not all about, not just about products. We provide products because they help you leverage and take advantage of the information. It's really about information. And that's what the bright side's all about. It's really about information. Information about how to take how to take care of the body. Information that clears up the confusion about how to take care of the body. Information about nutritional supplementation. And of course, information about skin care, which is my personal passion. If you're dealing with aging skin, if you're dealing with bruising skin, if you're dealing with red marks in the skin, if you're dealing with sensitive skin, you have a connective tissue problem and it has nothing to do with a melon extract. That Cindy Crawford tells it uh, sells, or it has nothing to do with superficial skin creams that you get on the internet, or you get from QVC, or you get from your esthetician. Again, with the exception of vitamin C, fat soluble vitamin C, and vitamin A in its retinol and retinoic acid or retin A form, and alpha hydroxy acids, there's very little you can do topically to address these uh, so-called skin issues, which are really connective tissue issues. To build connective tissue issues, you gotta understand about the fibroblast. The fibroblast is the magical cell. We talked about this before. It's so important. As a lover of the human body, as a lover of biology, as a lover of uh, uh, the study of cells and tissue, which is technically called histology, there, uh, in my opinion, there is no cell in the body that's more fascinating than the fibroblast. F-I-B-R-O-B-L-A-S-T. As the name implies, it is the cell that makes fibers. But it also makes the gooey stuff that the fibers sit in. Remember, the connective tissue is made up of fibers and gooey stuff, gel. And the interaction between the fibers and the gel provides a powerful, powerful strength and resilience that allows the body to move and, and be flexible and to stay intact. That's what the connective tissue is about. It's this combination of fibers and jelly material, and it all comes out of one cell. That is so amazing. All the connective tissue, the 25 to 30 percent of the body that holds us intact, that's responsible for electrical, electrical communication as we've said in the past, that's responsible for our connection to uh, the universal electrical field. Yes, the universe, the earth is surrounded with an electrical field and this electrical field interacts with our body via the connective tissue and all of this stuff comes out of one cell, one type of cell. It's called the fibroblast. And in the world of skincare, this is the holy grail of anti-aging. Activating the fibroblast, feeding the fibroblast, nourishing the fibroblast, keeping the fibroblast healthy. Skincare ingredients are measured for their anti-aging properties 
for their biochemical anti-aging properties in the world of aesthetics, in the world of dermatology, for, uh, by how well they turn on or they activate the fibroblasts. And it happens to be true that there's lots of things that will activate the fibroblasts. There's, there's many plant compounds, for example, that will activate the fibroblasts, particularly plant sugars, things that we call polysaccharides, these, these complex sugars. Polysaccharides will activate the fibroblasts. Herbal ingredients, amino acids, they can activate the fibroblasts. But when it comes to actually in real life turning on the fibroblasts, it's a little more difficult. You can take a fibroblast and put it in a little test tube or put it in a Petri dish and, and then put some peptides in the Petri dish. You may activate the fibroblast. You may put some, some plant extracts or herbal extracts in this Petri dish and you might activate the fibroblast. But in the skin, it's different. The skin is not a Petri dish. The skin is not a test tube. This distinction between what occurs in a test tube and what occurs in a petri dish in a laboratory and what actually happens in real life is, uh, in Latin, is the distinction between in vitro, which means in glass, vitro meaning glass, in vitro and in vivo, vivo meaning life. And this is a very, very important distinction that a lot of skincare companies don't make. They'll give you, quote, your statistics about what this does and what, uh, how well this ingredient works, but they're not telling you that's in vitro, in a test tube, in glass. What happens in vivo is a lot different because the fibroblast is not exposed. It's deep. It's way deep, relatively speaking. So activating the fibroblast is a little bit more complicated in real life than it is in, in a test tube or in a laboratory. It's a little more complicated in vivo than it is vitro. And this, the fact that the fibroblasts are, are so deep, relatively deep, limits our ability to truly turn, turn this cell on, turn on the fibroblast. Remember, the skin is multi-layered. And I say remember because this is easy to forget. When we look at the skin, it doesn't look like it's multi-layered. It doesn't, it doesn't look like there are strata or layer, layers. It looks like one uniform substance. And then we're led to believe, we're induced to believe that we can create changes by just rubbing stuff on the skin. The truth of the matter is, it is no small feat to get ingredients to the lower levels of the skin, to the dermis, which is where the fibroblasts live, which is where this, this matrix of, of, of gooey stuff and connective tissue fibers, collagen most especially, but also something called elastin, they all live down in the dermis. The skin is mostly dermis, even though it doesn't look that way. 90% of our skin is dermis, but it's covered with a completely different substance like icing covers a cake. The dermis is covered by something that's completely different, by a structure that's completely different. Just like icing is a completely different character than the cake it covers, the surface of the skin is composed of a completely different substance than the extracellular matrix and the dermis and the connective tissue below. And when you rub your cream on, and you rub your finger, you touch your, uh, you slide your finger along the, the cream that you just rubbed on your skin, you're not feeling anything alive. You're feeling wax and oil and dead skin cells. And you could spend $100 or $200 or a lot of money just to have soft, dead skin. This is, highlights the inanity, the stupidity of the way we take care of our skin. Now, the dermis is also the site of the blood. And this is also very important when it comes to transdermal penetration. You could tell that you've gotten some activity in the dermis when you rub something on the skin and your skin turns red. Now this can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll come back with your phone calls and more good health information on the bright side right after this. We are back. We are back on the bright side. My farm is Ben. If you're interested in checking out our Longevity products, please head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can purchase any of the products you hear advertised or recommended on the program at all websites, at all three websites. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. And, of course, if you're interested in changing the look of your skin with real active ingredients that will drive the production of connective tissue, you want vitamin C, vitamin A, fat-soluble vitamin C, and vitamin A in its retinol, retinol, uh, retinol form. Uh, you, uh, you can also use retinoic acid, of course, retinoic acid, but you need a prescription for that. From an over-the-counter perspective, it's just vitamin C and retinol, and you can find high-dose retinol, 5% retinol, as well as high-dose fat-soluble vitamin C 
at truthtreatments.com. Take a look at our retinol 5% gel if you're dealing with thinning skin or you don't want to be dealing with thinning skin. If you're dealing with photo damaged skin or you don't want to be dealing with photo damaged skin. Likewise, wrinkles, fine lines, crow's feet. You need to be using retinol on a regular basis, once a week, maybe twice a week, maybe once every 10 days, but on a regular basis, and you want enough of it to make a difference. Not 0.1%, not 0.05%. I know how this game is played, folks. They'll tell you there's retinol in there, and there's a speck of it. You can't play around when you're dealing with broken, with wounded skin or with aging skin. And this is where I learned this idea of really putting powerful amounts of active materials in skincare products. Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Retinol 5% Gel. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com as well as our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. We're all formulated by myself in my compounding pharmacy. And not just overnight either. Over 20 plus years of experience. That's how long it took me to come up with these ideas. If you're interested in checking out products that leverage these ideas, if you're interested yourself in leveraging these ideas, head over to truthtreatments.com, check out all our products, Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. You don't use very much of the stuff either, by the way. Just a speck of it every day. And most folks will notice differences in their skin within one or two days. Significant differences over the, courses, over the course of weeks and months. That's how you can tell if you have an active skincare product, by the way, is your skin will get better and better and better looking over the course of time as the nutrients are absorbed and utilized by the tissue. Truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Okay, our number today, 844-236-6010. Hang tight if you're on hold. Just a couple things, a couple stories I want to talk about real quick. Uh, let's see. First, from the journal Cell Metabolism, obesity and sedentary behavior, which is the chicken, which is the egg? Which came first, the obesity or the sedentary behavior? Well, as it turns out, they both lead into each other. Sedentary behavior will cause obesity, and obesity leads to sedentary behavior. The more weight you're carrying, the less likely it is that you're going to want to move around. And the less you move around, the more weight you're carrying. And this is how this downward spiral of obesity really gets going. When, ironically, when we're obese, when we're, when we're carrying a lot of weight, that's when you really want to start moving your body around. Moving the body generates electrical energy. And you can experience this electrical energy, this, this surge of electrical energy first thing in the morning. One of the major reasons why we get up in the morning groggy is because our body has not moved for eight hours. If you watch a cat or you watch a dog after they take a nap, the first thing they do is they stretch their body. And they stretch their body in this very unique kind of way that generates electrical energy in the connective tissue. We can do the same thing. Just moving your body, walking up and down the stairs will generate electrical energy in the connective tissue. At the end of the day, we are electrical beings. We talk about nutrition all the time on this program, obviously. But the only reason nutrition works, check this out. The only reason vitamins, minerals, micronutrients work is because they support the flow of electrical energy. Fundamentally, we are electrical beings. If anybody ever asks you why vitamins or how vitamins work, you can tell them they work by facilitating the conduction and the movement of electrical energy in the cell. That's how nutrients work. That's their role, is to improve and facilitate and enhance how electrical energy moves through the cell. They're electroconductive. They carry electrons. That's how nutrients work. That's how micronutrients work. The reason why we're, over the last 150 years our health has declined so significantly is because we're getting electrical energy in the form of calories without the carriers of the electrical energy without the molecules that facilitate the movement of that electrical energy. We're getting calories without the micronutrients. This was Dr. Wallach's brilliant insight 50 years ago or 60 years ago. He noticed that animals that were fed micronutrients did a lot better and he noticed that farmers were made sure that they gave their animals micronutrients. The micronutrients without the macronutrients are using micro, uh, are getting macronutrients without micronutrients, getting calories without vitamins and minerals is the key to understanding 
our nutritional deficiency crisis. We're getting lots of energy without the nutrients that allow us to facilitate the movement of the electrical energy. At the end of the day, we are electrical beings and anything we can do to improve the conduction of electrical energy through the body, through the connective tissue, into cells is going to improve our health. That means movement. Move the body. Try, try this tomorrow morning when you get up. Try jogging in place. Try getting on a rebounder. Try just simply stretching first thing in the morning and you will notice that you feel better and you are more energized just by the bodily movement. If you're overweight or if you're obese, just bodily movement can facilitate electrical energy that can improve your body's ability to utilize all that ex excess weight, to burn all that excess fat. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got a full board. Let's go to Richard in Florida. Good morning, Richard. Welcome to the Bright Side, buddy. How you doing? Can you hear me? I hear you loud and Hello? clear. How you doing today? Good, good, sir. Uh, five years ago, I had a stroke due to uncontrolled blood pressure. Since then, I'm on three uh, hypertensive drugs twice a day. And uh, because of the stroke, the optic nerve in my right eye was damaged. Now, I do have some peripheral vision. But I was wondering what I could do to help see if I could That's actually a great restore question. it. Awesome question. And the reason I say it's an awesome question because it, it highlights this basic idea that I talk about all the time on this program. When I do my presentations. It's a fundamental idea when it comes to how you heal the body and a fundamental misunderstanding and it comes to, when it comes to the medical models approach to health and healing. And that is, you, Richard, check this out. You don't want to focus on your eye. You want to focus on your body. You don't want to direct your attention on the eye itself. You want to direct your attention on the entire body. Are you with me so far? Yes, sir. Okay. The body will take care of the eye once you take care of the body. And this is so true. This, de this delusion of diagnosis does not serve us. We don't want to focus on specific areas of the body. We want to focus on the entire body. So here's what you need to do. You need to eliminate anything that's getting into your system that causes inflammation. And that particularly means food, especially sugar. There's a major relationship between sugar and eye health. There's a major relationship between sugar, I should say blood sugar, and inflammation. So first thing you want to do is you want to go on a ketogenic diet or a diabetic diet. Now, if you had a history of stroke, probably you already have messed up blood sugar. You probably have a history of messed up blood sugar. How old were you, by the way, when you had the stroke? Uh, 55. Okay. So you've got to have had a history of what's called dysglycemia or messed up blood sugar. You pro have you been diagnosed as a diabetic? No, sir. Okay, so hang on. We've got to take a break. You're going to be treating yourself like a diabetic. You're also going to need to start working on digestive health as well because that's another major source of inflammation. Uh, hang on, Richard, because we've got to take a break. We'll, we'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll take a quick break and come back with more good health information and your phone calls right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side talking to Richard in Florida. You there, my friend, Richard? Yes, sir. Richard? I'm here. Okay. All right. So you want number one, uh, optic nerve damage, uh, have, have a history of stroke, stroke, and, and, and all circulatory problems, and all health problems, pretty much. Uh, there's a major blood uh, relationship to blood sugar problems, even if you have not been diagnosed as a diabetic. The, di the diagnosis for diabetes is an, based on an arbitrary number. We don't just get diabetes like you turn on a switch. It's a gradual thing. It happens over the course of years, decades. And so if, you've had a, if you had a stroke at age 55, guaranteed you got messed up blood sugar, treat yourself like a diabetic. That means go v as low carb as you can, and by that I mean refined carbs, flour, bread, sugar, sweets, desserts, you know what I'm talking about? Brush, soda yes, pop, yes, fruit juice. Mm -hmm. All right. Treat yourself uh, like a diabetic in terms of the foods you're, eat, uh, foods you're eating or not eating. More fiber will also help you. Uh, also more protein, particularly something called the branched chain amino acids or BCAAs. You can get BCAA supplements or you can use whey protein to get your BCAAs. Bone broth protein will also help you if you're dealing with sugar problems. You can get that at brightsidehealth.com or bone broth protein. Uh, also the B vitamins, high doses. You get that in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Also uh, zinc. 50 milligrams a day of zinc, particularly zinc picolinate, vitamin E, 400 IU a day, alpha lipoic acid, 400 milligrams a day, your ultimate selenium from longevity can help, 400 micrograms a day, as well as chromium and vanadium, uh, you'll find that in the Sweeties product. 
secondly, another major source of inflammation is going to be digestive toxicity. If you have any issues with your digestive system, gas, bloating, constipation, those need to be addressed. Look for problem foods or foods that cause digestive problems, then eliminate those. You might want to try a Swero V cleanse and then an elimination diet. That's where you do your Swero V, half a bottle every hour for uh, a, one or two or even three days. That's all you do is just a half a bottle of Swero V every hour for one or two or three days. Don't do any other food. And then you do the elimination diet using a food diary where you eat one kind of food, write down, keep notes, take, uh, accumulate data on how you feel from a digestive system perspective. And any foods that cause problems should be eliminated. Likely suspects will be gluten, uh, grains, beans, legumes, peanuts, soy, possibly eggs and dairy, any of, the, any of those kinds of foods. Those are likely suspects, but it could be anything. You just got to be vigilant. And of course, getting on a good nutritional supplement program will also help you. And moving your body. Remember, the connective tissue helps you generate electrical energy. And if you have a stroke, that's a sign that your blood vessels are breaking down. That could be related to electric, uh, uh, electrical energy issues. And of course, the optic nerve and nerves themselves are also uh, dependent on the flow of electrical energy. Notice how we didn't say anything about the eyes here. We're talking about the entire body. You don't have an eye problem, you got a body problem. Work on the body and the body will take care of the eye. Now that's not 100% comprehensive by any means, Richard, because I don't have time to go into it in great detail. I got to get to a bunch of more calls and uh, if you're interested, if you want me to help you some, uh, further, please send me an email to ben at ksco.com. Put your phone number in there and I'll, uh, I'll give you a call personally, okay? I hope I helped you, Richard. Thank Thanks, you. buddy. Thank you, my friend. Happy New Year. All right, let's go to Elaine in Alaska. What's up, Elaine? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. What would you do in Alaska for the New Year? Oh, we actually uh, celebrated over a bonfire and the stars. Oh, nice. Amazing. Is it 24-hour darkness there? No, oh, no, no. Maybe no? just 18. Oh, 18 hours. Okay. <laughs> All right, All right yeah. so how can we help you today? Yeah, uh, one of my patients, um, she has, let's see if I can say it, hemochromatosis. Hemochromatosis, uh, that's a, a problem with too much iron in the blood. Yeah. That's a liver problem. That is not an iron problem. They'll tell you it's an iron problem. Okay. Uh, your body's absorbing too much iron. That's a liver problem. The, the body, uh, iron is re iron's a mixed bag. Iron's a very fascinating substance. You obviously need iron, but iron is also very uh, readily oxidizes, as we all can observe, but by rusty nails. Rust is a sign of oxidized iron, and iron o oxidized anything is a problem, or can be a problem in the body, and iron very easily oxidizes. It's one of the most easy to oxidize of all the minerals. So the body controls iron very tightly, and there are chemicals in the liver that control how much iron will be absorbed, how much iron will be utilized, how much iron will be released. If you have been diagnosed as, uh, with hemochromatosis, you want to consider it to be a liver problem. We know that the liver is a digestive organ. So you got to work on the digestive system. The things that mess up the liver are primarily foods as well as uh, elevated blood sugar and problems with fat metabolism. Basically, it's all about foods. So you, if you've been diagnosed with hemochromatosis, work on your digestive system. Look for pro Same thing like we just talked about with Richard. Look for problem foods, number one, and then eliminate those foods. And then use digestive support, particularly probiotics. There's a very important relationship between gut bacteria and the liver that is underappreciated. You want to leverage fermented foods, your nightly essence, Caloric restriction can also help you. That means restricting your calories. Going ketogenic may help you. Uh, if she has a history or if your patient has a history of gallbladder problems, those need to be addressed. That's a food allergy issue. You can use lecithin and bile salts to support liver health. The B complex is important for the liver, especially vitamin B12. You may want to do vitamin B12 shots in addition to just lots of B vitamins. The Beyond Tangy Tangerine is great for your B vitamins. Vitamin E is important for the liver. Vitamin A is also important for the liver. Make sure she's getting, your, your uh, client's getting all her fatty nutrients, 20,000. IU of vitamin A, 400 IU of vitamin E, alpha lipoic acid also plays a role in liver health. My all-time favorite uh, uh, liver health nutrient is something called NAC. I'm sure you've heard me talk about that one before. N-acetylcysteine, fabulous, absolutely stunningly important and underappreciated nutritional supplement. NAC, especially for liver health, it's a major liver detox substance. Also, building glutathione using things like SAM-E supplements, glutamine supplements, glycine supplements, 
Uh, all of these are important for helping build glutathione. And there's a really important relationship between something called methylation and glutathione. So anything you could do to help your body methylate, and that includes SAMe and the B vitamins, can also be helpful. So much more you can do. But focus on the liver is what you want to do when you have hemochromatosis. Don't, it's not just an iron problem. It's a liver problem and a digestive problem as well. All right? There's also, like I was saying to uh, our last caller, there's tons more, but that should, that should give you a good start. Thanks so much, Elaine. Thank Hope you. I helped you. God bless you. Happy New Year. All right, let's go to Matthew in Texas. Welcome to the Bright Side, Matthew. What's going on? Hey, Dan. How you doing? Happy New Year. Hey, buddy. Happy New Year to you. What's going on today? Hey, so uh, I'm a Pilates instructor here in Austin. Uh, I listen to your show every day during my morning break. Love it. Well, you must uh, love the connective tissue. You must love all the stuff about connective tissue. Yeah, absolutely. I called in right when you started talking about the certain types of stretches you do to activate that connective tissue and, and uh, electrify our body. Yeah, isn't and, that cool? Um, tell the listeners yeah, real quick about, awesome. tell us about Pilates real quick. We only have about a minute, but to give us a little, yeah. a little uh, succinct synopsis of Pilates. Yeah, Pilates is, is a style of exercise that uh, has its foundations in physical therapy. So we move in ways that a physical therapist would take you through, except for doing exercise in addition to the stretches and the deep core training. So it's a really effective way to exercise for somebody, say, who's overweight or obese. Mm. And um, a lot of my members come in with significant body issues. Uh, We work hard on the musculoskeletal system and also use a lot of your recommendations on diet um, from things like um, breast cancer. Um, I have members with... um, uh, endoc- endocrine uh, disorders. And, and just moving um, the connect- working on the connective tissue helps the endocrine disorders, right? Oh, absolutely. And Isn't that amazing? Especially the digestive system. Because we're mechanically stimulating it with our exercise. Yeah. That's awesome, man. And now give your business a plug because i got a lot of listeners in Austin. Oh, yeah. This is uh, Matthew. I'm the owner of V-Bodies, Pilates, and Fitness in Austin, Texas. And I'm a huge fan of pharmacist Ben. You, you stick to what his advice is, guys, and y'all will be a uh, healthier person for it. Absolutely. Thank you, Matthew. I appreciate that. God bless you. Have a beautiful holiday and a great new year. Take care, man. Hey, you too, Ben. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, buddy. Bye. All right, let's give, uh, let's give Frankie, Frankie the Cheesehead, the last word. Frank, what's up, man? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How you been, Ben? I haven't talked to you for a while. Hope you're doing well. I'm all right. Um, you know, I just do my uh, normal... Um, uh, yearly annual um, checkup, and they they wanted to put me on testosterone because my levels were down. And um, I let I did take some shots, and and I really didn't like it. Insulin. Uh, losing. If you if you now you I remember you're in your forties, right? How old are you? I, I'm right? thirty nine. Oh, you're thirty nine. Okay. So uh, if you got a testosterone issue, focus on blood sugar and body fat. Estrogen female hormone is made in body fat. You will carry more body fat if you have dysglycemia or messed up blood sugar. So you've got to focus on body fat. And that means, uh, that means keep, you know, ketogenic diet, keeping your blood sugar down, using your B vitamins and selenium. Anything you do to support sugar metabolism, you want to lose body fat if you're dealing with testosterone issues. Fat will make you feminine if you're a guy, and it will over-feminize you if you're a woman. Frank, I'm out of time. Only got 10 more seconds. Thanks for your call, buddy. Anybody who uh, we left on hold, send an email to ben at ksco.com. Put your phone number in there, and I'll call you personally. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.